Ahoyo gamers, I'm the Scallyswag, your colored commentator. Today I'm talking about this. I don't like this. Dang Old Grandpa is a murder mystery visual novel series that I have a love-hate relationship with. I love the visual and not so much the novel. The artwork, animations, class trial cinematics, music, voice acting, all phenomenal. But I feel the storyline, pacing, and character development is lacking and could have been done better. How dare you backtalk, Master! Master's way more perfect. Master has to come along with us, as long as I have my Master's love! A lot better. And now I can pay more money to replay the same games I already own on my computer. Doggone Romper Decepticons is a collection of every game in the series so far. Every game that matters. There's also a brand new entry based off the board game from V3. I enjoyed this mode. It's got cute visuals, fun skits between characters who never interact with each other normally, RPG combat... More of this, please! It's great for when you're tired of the murder mysteries and want to experience Dodney Rangerfield in a different genre. Still no. But I have a big problem with the box art. It sucks. Half of these characters shouldn't be here, and the other half aren't placed properly. This collection is effectively the definitive or deluxe edition that many Switch games love to call themselves, so this misrepresentation is a huge disservice to the series. Before I continue, I'll be spoiling everything because I can't make my points otherwise. Except for the DR3 anime, I won't be talking about that, so if you haven't seen it, good on you, I don't recommend it. That was a laxative. Skip to this timestamp if you don't want spoilers, there's your warning. I'll start with the first thing that caught my eye. Big Chungus. Why does Hifumi look like a scheming mastermind? Why is he even here at all? Hifumi is a nothing character who barely contributes to the story. He's a perverted anime fanboy who falls in love with a computer program before dying halfway through the game. Giving him the central position on the box art makes no sense. Who is honestly looking at this and saying, holy sh**? My favorite character is on here! You know who should have gone there? Monokuma, the mascot for the whole series? The mascot for Spike Chunsoft? He is the most important character, yet for some reason he's at the very bottom and is smaller than almost everyone else? Look how prominent he is on the original box art for these games. In the first one, he's the only character that you can see clearly while the main cast blends into the background. His black and white color scheme helps him stand out against the pink. His importance is emphasized and your eyes are immediately drawn to him. What the hell is this? And Makoto is treated the same way. I'd argue he's the second most important character in the series. The central theme of Damn Girl Relax is hope versus despair. Monokuma represents despair and Makoto represents hope. He's called the ultimate hope at the end of the first game. These two characters are what the series is about, yet they're shoved to the edges as if they're less significant than Hifumi. Makoto should be the largest person here, but that spot was given to Kaede for some reason? Now, I love Kaede. She's my favorite character in the series. She's best girl. She's ultimate wife who f off Chiaki, but she has the least amount of screen time out of everyone here. She's playable in the prologue and chapter one, and then she dies. My feelings demand a refund? Her actions do have a lasting impact throughout the game, unlike some other people, so she definitely deserves to be on the box art at all, but swap her with Makoto. Or place her here. Why is Akane here? Out of everyone from DR2, why her? Just like Hifumi, her actions barely affect the story, except it's worse because she survives the entire game. The most notable thing she does is get Nekomaru nearly killed and turned into a robot until he's actually killed in the following chapter. She's typically clueless about everything that happens, and most of her dialogue is about food, penises, and groping. I'll let you cop a feel if you want. I just gotta get a Benjamin from him before I let him touch me, right? Was he grabbing his front tail? And this is when the hard tail appears! Or if you use your front tail. I know guys have tails that get hard when they're grabbed! I doubt she comes to mind when most people think of Danger Will Robinson. Now, Chihiro is easier to justify because his actions do affect the story. He creates Alter Ego, who discovers information that furthers the narrative and saves Makoto from death unfortunately. But there are still more important characters who could be featured instead. Like Best Boy. The main protagonist of V3 is absent from a collection that includes V3. Why? Just put him on there, right next to Kaede, because that's where he belongs, and I am saying that objectively without any influence from my personal biases or desires. 
Don't at me. Shuichi's presence wouldn't even spoil the twist of him replacing Kaede after she dies. The trailers for both this collection and the original game were careful to show only Kaede as the main protagonist. While she's alive, Shuichi simply acts as her partner. They meet each other first, they find the other students together, they explore the school together, they plan a counterattack together, they investigate Rontaro's death together, they have an intimate in-depth conversation while holding hands, Shuichi looks up her skirt and Kaede catches him but she doesn't give a f because she thinks he's cute and wants to sit on his face. Anyone playing V3 for the first time will assume Shuichi fulfills the same role as Kyoko and Chiaki, the closest confidant and possible love interest to the main protagonist. V3 could use another character on the box art because Kaede is the only one. Why? DR1 gets three characters, DR2 gets three characters, Ultra Despair Girls gets two characters. Hold up. Why is the main protagonist of Ultra Despair Girls on here when that game isn't in the collection? Hey, remember when Nintendo put Poltergeist Luigi and Wario on the cover of 3D All-Stars? That was a weird decision. In fact, multiple characters from Ultra Despair Girls will appear in Ultimate Summer Camp. Komaru, Shirokuma, Kurokuma, the Warriors of Hope, this MILF, but not Haiji because f*** Haiji. Newcomers will see this tab marked Ultra Despair Girls and have no clue what that is. They won't know who these people are or how they're related to the series. And if the skits ever make subtle references to Ultra Despair Girls, they won't be understood because that game isn't here. Instead of these questionable characters, how about they put, I don't know, them? So the collector's edition, why isn't it called Ultimate Edition? Comes with a poster that features Kyoko, Nagito, and Shuichi. A popularity poll was held in late 2020, and they were voted the most popular characters of each game. This poll is found in Dragon Roost Decade, a group of books released in March 2021 to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the series, containing artwork, storyboards, character profiles, and interviews. But as of now, it's only in Japanese, and I don't own it, but thankfully the Dr. Rhombus subreddit has the poll in English. Let's take a look. Chihiro came in sixth place. Okay, not bad. Both Hifumi and Akane came in last place. Behind others. What the f*** does that mean? As a side note, Toko came in first place for Ultra Despair Girls, but who cares because she's not on the poster and that game isn't included in Donald Reagan Decathlon? So to recap, this box art shoves the most important characters to the sidelines, gives unpopular characters more prominence, doesn't have the protagonist of one of the included games, does have the protagonist of a game that's not included, and ignores characters who were voted number one in an official poll found in a group of books that were created to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the series. This. I was surprised to learn that this was made by Komatsuzaki Rui, the character artist for the series. And this guy is fantastic. We have him to thank for all these lovable idiots. Everything from their clothes, facial expressions, and body language gives them so much charm and personality. They're so distinct that if you lined them up as silhouettes, you'd still be able to tell who was who. And given how many characters there are, that's insane. He's also the artist for the spin-off books like Zero and Kirigiri. There's no question of his talent or his passion for the series, so what happened here? These characters and their placements make no sense, the main theme of hope versus despair isn't conveyed anywhere, and it's on a boring featureless gray background. Compare this to the original box art for these games. The first one has the characters' names and talents spread throughout. The second has vibrant colors and flowers to reflect the tropical island setting. The V-third has... whatever all this is. But this? This looks like it was outsourced to a third party who barely understood the series, not the official artist who's been around from the very beginning. However, Kodaka Kazutaka, the creator of Daniel Radcliffe, actually praised Komatsuzaki for the box art, apparently liking Hifumi's inclusion, so f*** everything I just said, I guess. Who am I to argue with God? Here's what I believe the box art should have looked like. I feel these characters and their placements and the backdrop better represent the series. Sadly, I had to use older artwork because these new ones don't exist as individual assets and good luck trying to crop them out in Photoshop. That's not the worst thing I've made. I'll bring up one counterpoint to my argument. Maybe it was intentional that the box art looks this way. The biggest draw of Dude Where's My Rover is that anyone can die at any moment for any reason. If only the most important characters are on the box art, it could spoil that they survive either the entire game or a large portion of it. Putting lesser characters on there would throw off newcomers. But if that was the goal, there are better characters for that. Like Sayaka. She acts as your sidekick at the beginning of the game, so her betrayal and death are shocking. She's the first victim in the series, so she's iconic, and her actions are far more meaningful to the protagonist than anything he Ifumi does. As it is now, a newcomer will look at this and think, this guy must be important to the series. But then he dies halfway through the first game, contributes almost nothing to the story, and is never seen or mentioned again except for this bullshit. Then they'll look back at the box art and say, oh, I guess he wasn't important. Okay then. You see how there's nothing interesting to say about it? There's nothing to take away, it's just misleading. 
But my box art has a subtle detail. You see how Shuichi is the same size as Kaede, whereas the other partner characters are smaller? That's to show that they have an equal role as playable protagonists. Newcomers likely won't notice it at first, but they might after they play V3. At the end of the day, I feel having accurate and meaningful box art is better for a series. Now, to be fair, I think 3D All-Stars is pretty lame. It's just the original covers cropped and slapped into a triptych, no new artwork, it's really lazy. But it's not misleading. One look will tell you that you're getting three colorful, cheerful, exciting adventures, and it doesn't show characters that have no role in these games. Before I finish, I'll list some positives about this box art, because I do want to give it credit for the things I feel it does well. Number one, Hajime is the only character I feel is in the right spot. He's the second protagonist in the series, so putting him directly behind the largest character makes sense. Number two, regardless of who's on here, the artwork itself is gorgeous. Look at how much detail is in the clothing alone. The shading, the desaturated color palette, Kaede's thick thigh, and this is brand new artwork created for this collection. None of it was reused from the games. And number three, Junko isn't here. Her reveal is one of the biggest twists in the first game, so including her would have been too risky. Of course, that didn't stop them from putting her front and center in the trailer for Ultimate Summer Camp, where she's wearing Monokuma hairpins and riding on an inflatable monster. Akuma. A plus, guys. Oh look, they put Kaede hanging by a noose in the background. That's a nice easter egg. With that said, I am excited for Demigod Rasputin Decapitation. The Nintendo Swanch is still selling by the f*** load, so porting old games is a great way to renew a series' popularity and bring in new fans. If this sells well, we might even get a new game, which I would be very excited to play. I pre-ordered the Not Ultimate Edition, which comes with the poster, lenticular prints, a better case that I can look at instead of this sh and new music that I can't listen to because it's on a CD! Delightful! It comes out December 3rd, 2021, the same day my friends are getting married. Eh, they'll find a new best man. Those are my thoughts on the box art. It makes no sense. It's cool at first glance, but it falls apart under the tiniest bit of scrutiny. Actually, I can say the same thing about Daddy Rectum's entire storyline, because that doesn't make any sense either. I take it all back. This box art represents the series perfectly. Yeah.